Welcome to another episode of Elevated Minis. In this second and final part of how to convert your wildwood into a weirwood, we're going to focus on the painting process using primarily the dry brush technique. We're also going to try out a few contrast paints. If you haven't seen the previous video of how I put this together, make sure to check that out first using the card on the top right or the link down in the description. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and bell buttons or leave a comment to let me know how I'm doing with these videos. Having said that, let's get started. Just as an aside, I didn't glue all of the branches on the tree to start because I knew it would be difficult to paint all the branches and under the leaves if I'd stuck them all on there to begin with. It just saves you a headache later on. But I started off painting all of the bark using Wildwood Contrast Paint. This is my first time trying contrast paint and I thought the tree would be a safe thing to try it out on before using it on other models. Uh, but if you don't have the contrast paint, just use the any dark brown you have to base coat. 95% of this isn't going to be visible by the time we're done anyway. Uh, we just want to get in all the cracks of the tree bark really and have a solid base to highlight up from. I slapped down Steel Legion Drab all over the ground cover. There's no need to be careful here. I probably shouldn't have used the expensive Citadel paint on this because I ended up covering pretty much all of it in a later step. <laughs> so don't be like me and just use your cheap uh, brown craft paint to base coat this and save your expensive model paints for the later steps and details. From there, I moved on to dry brushing all the bark on the tree trunk and branches with Rackarth Flesh. I realize some of my viewers may be newer to the hobby, so if you're new to dry brushing, make sure you have a clean, dry brush, grab some paint, and then use a paper towel to wipe away most of it until it's just a little bit of pigment coming off of the brush. Apply it to the surface of the model by brushing in light circles or using a downward motion to try and catch all the raised details. Um, too much paint on the brush would get into all the cracks, but we're trying to preserve them here. With the same technique, I moved on to using Pallid Witch Flesh over the same areas as the Rackarth Flesh, but this time I'm only covering about 75% of the area I was before. Uh, I also didn't worry about using this color on the branches because they would be in shadow on the tree, so I left them alone for this. For my final dry brush on the trunk, I used dead white, but any white would be fine for this, and I'm mainly only hitting areas that I think would receive a little bit more light than the previous layers. I then moved on to the pond and put down a solid base coat of Nocturna Shadow over the entire surface. If you don't have Nocturna Shadow and you're following along, it's just a really dark olive green color. For the leaves, I went with Heavy Red from Game Color. Mephiston Red or Corn Red would also be a good choice for using Citadel paints. It's a lot of leaves, so have a little patience. To push the leaves into more of a uh, purpley red, I thinned down some Druchy uh, Violet shade in about a 1 to 1 ratio of some water because the wash can be a bit too intense for these purposes if you use it straight out of the pot. I just wanted to get into all those cracks and details and slightly tint the color of the leaves to be a rich velvety purple kind of red instead of an orangey red. Here's a few reference photos that I use so you can see what I mean. While the wash was drying, I moved on to using my favorite texture paste at the moment, and that's Thick Mud from Vallejo. Um, I was initially going to put this on in a few select places, but the more I put it on, the more I kept going because I really liked the look of it. I ended up covering nearly 90% of the surface with it. I love this stuff, and I'll probably be picking more of, uh, more of these textures up in the future. keep the project moving while waiting for things to dry, I moved on to painting the moss on the tree using Death Guard Green. <laughs> 
for the mushrooms sticking out of the tree, while well, not on the Game of Thrones tree, I still had to deal with them. Uh, so I decided to try Nasdrag Yellow, which is another contrast paint. Uh, since I dry brushed layers on the mushrooms already from doing the bark on the tree, the highlights and shadows were already in place. So when we combine that with the translucency and pigmentation of the contrast paint, it really works to our advantage and has a nice color payoff. I'll have to experiment more, more with uh, undercoats and contrast paint in the future, but I imagine not all contrast paints are equal in this regard, but thumbs up for how this color turned out. To finish off these mushrooms and give them a little more character, I used a fine tip brush using ivory and carefully placed little dots on top of all of them. It's a nice little touch and fine detail for people to discover if they're looking at your piece closely. With the water, I wanted the pond to look like it had some algae growth around the edges, so I took a sponge and loaded it up with some uh, Lauren Forest and wiped a bit of the paint away in a paper towel so the texture would come through. I left about 50% of the dark green in the center to give the illusion of some depth to the pond, and I made sure I didn't pat uniformly around the edge. And using the same sponge technique, I then used Strachan Green on a few of the edges to simulate a bit of a shallow end to the water. I used some simple base coats next on the skulls, bones, and rocks that are all over the base of the model to get them ready for some contrast paints. I used bone white on the bones and stonewall gray on the rocks. It's a real easy step here. I went with Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint for the bones, and this color is extremely close to Sarah from Sepia Shade. I made it to do a video of color comparisons of shade and contrast because they seem very close. The main difference is their consistency. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see down in the comments. I then used Ethonian Camo Shade on all of the moss on the tree. With this, just make sure you take the wash onto the bark a little bit, as well as the moss that is modeled onto the tree. It really makes it feel like it's growing on there. I forgot to record this, but I used Basiliconum Gray on all of the rocks, and this was the first contrast paint that I wasn't totally happy with, but it was probably just the wrong color for this. It seemed like a heavier bodied gnome oil wash to me, which I'm sure will have its uses, but for this application, I didn't really care for it, uh, but it ended up looking fine in the end. Letting the contrast paint dry a bit, I kept moving, and I probably didn't need to do this next bit of dry brushing because game color earth is almost identical to the color of the thick mud, and there's nothing noticeably different after doing this. But after wasting that little bit of time, I went with a bone white dry brush, and I used that all over the brown earth, as well as the bones and skulls on the model. Then decided to highlight the bones up next. I used a fine brush and layered up some ivory and the most raised areas on all of them. With a smaller dry brush, I used wolf gray over all of the stones and rocks. It brought a bit of dimension and color back to them after using the basiliconum gray contrast paint. And then to highlight up the rocks, I used pallid witch flesh and all of the jagged edges. <laughs> 
I wanted to mess with some pigments and it could probably be argued whether or not this made much of a difference, but it was my fault because I went against my instincts. These are the colors I used, um, but I'm not 100% sure on the name of them because they've been rubbed off over time, but I'm pretty sure they're Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, and Yellow Ochre from uh, Vallejo. Correct me if I'm wrong on that down in the comments. But to do this, I used a dry brush to randomly place the pigment around the base and then brushed it away to blend it into the surface a bit. I just wanted some variation on the ground and I did get it, that a little bit at the end, but it's not very noticeable. When you use the pigments, you normally need to use some kind of binder or sealer so they don't fly off the surface since they're dry. My instinct told me to use a little bit of airbrush thinner over the pigment, but I ended up using Agrax Earthshade instead. While the Earthshade seals in the pigment, it also turned the brown pigments, well, brown and darker brown. I probably should have done the wash first and then placed the pigment, but sometimes we just kind of get lost in what we're doing and aren't thinking like we should. At least I do. With the wash drying, I went to super gluing the leaves in place, which was a little bit fiddly, and if you have one of these trees, I found gluing them from top to bottom to be easiest. Also use the bigger sets of leaves towards the bottom, and it should work out a bit better for you. The part I was probably most nervous about on this tree was the bloody sap coming out of the eyes. I was painting red on a white surface, and I knew if I screwed this up, it would be very difficult to fix, but I went for it. Uh, to create the blood effect, I used Tamiya Clear Red and mixed in a little bit of Gory Red from Game Color. Uh, the Clear Red gives it the glossy finish, while the Gory Red darkened the color a bit. You could also use Citadel's Blood for the Blood God, uh, but I didn't have any of that at the time. Uh, placing it, I tried to pull it up at the bottom of the eyes first, and then kind of dragged it down the sides from there. And I think it came out pretty well. And from there, I moved back to the ground with another dry brush of Game Color Earth, which came through this time since I used the pigments and darker wash and got the effect I was after. Um, I followed that dry brush up with um, Bone White to bring out the texture even more, and that about finishes the ground with the exception of the tufts and foliage, which I'll get into uh, in a bit. And moving on to finishing the leaves, I used a dry brush of Pallid Witch Flesh, which may, which may look a bit harsh right now, but this is a way you can highlight red without it going into the orangey side, or pink for that matter. We're going to knock this back down in the next step. And I'm going with Karaberg Crimson Shade to tint the highlights of the leaves. And like the Druchi Violet we used the first time, I watered this down in a 1 to 1 ratio so it didn't overpower the work we have done previously. And that covers all the painting for this video. We're now moving on to the water effect. I used a two-part resin from Art & Glow. Uh, but I separated the two parts into small disposable cups by weighing each one into an ounce and a half. You could use a measuring cup if you want, but I find weight to be more accurate because I was a baker in a former life, so it's just how I do things. Uh, we mix these together for five minutes, trying not to mix too vigorous vigorously because we want to prevent bubbles from forming. They're pretty much unavoidable most of the time, but I'll show you how to deal with that. So once thoroughly mixed, I dropped in probably about 8 to 10 drops of uh, black green game ink and carefully poured it into the pond using a popsicle stick to push it around uh, a little bit. It's self-leveling, so make sure it's on a level surface or you could end up with a mess on your table. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I always mix up too much resin. And I'm sure there's a formula to determine how much you need, so if you know that, let me know in the comments. But to get rid of the tiny bubbles in the resin, I used a lighter, and you can see just how quickly this stuff turns into a glassy surface. It's pretty satisfying to watch. I let the resin dry for a full day, and then I was able to move on to the tufts. These are swamp tufts from Army Painter, but use your favorite kind. Um, flower tufts would also be good, but I don't have any of those at the moment. 
and for the thicker foliage I use the same technique as I did in my how to make earthy bases video that I'll link in the top right. Uh, but a quick rundown of how I did it is I used a bit of tacky glue to get it stuck on the surface and then followed this with watered down glue to really lock this stuff into place. It'll dry clear and be plenty durable. And that covers it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this little series. And if you could help me out, remember to like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Let me know how I'm doing with these videos or if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see. If you want to follow me a bit more closely, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I typically post what I'm working on so you'll know what's coming in the future. All of those links will be down in the description. So until next time, guys, thanks again.